This is Reverend Mike Capron on Sunday, March 22nd, 2020. Uh, we just finished our conference call worship, which went pretty well, but I know some people couldn't manage to get through. There were a lot of busy signals. I know all these systems are overwhelmed. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and record the Bible reading and the sermon that I just gave and put it up on YouTube and Facebook. Um, before I do that, um, let me just mention that we are uh, going to be having our conference call worship every Sunday at 1030 and uh, Bible study on Wednesdays at 11 o'clock and Fridays at 11 o'clock. And if anybody wants the code to try and dial into those, um, just let me know through private message or by calling my cell. Um, we wish many blessings on everybody at this uh, this kind of tense time and we spent a lot of time praying for kind of peace and calm and remembering um, how God has been with us through so many years. Um, so I'm going to read uh, from Mark chapter 5 verses 21 to 34. When Jesus had crossed over by boat to the other side of the lake, a large crowd gathered around him while he was by the lake. Then one of the synagogue leaders named Jairus came and when he saw Jesus, he fell at his feet. He pleaded earnestly with him, my little daughter is dying. So please come and put your hands on her that she will be healed and live. So Jesus went with him. A large crowd followed and pressed around him, and a woman was there who had been subject to bleeding for 12 years. She had suffered a great deal under the care of many doctors and had spent all she had, yet instead of getting better, she grew worse. When she heard about Jesus, she came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak, because she thought, if I just touch his clothes, I will be healed. Immediately, her bleeding stopped, and she felt in her body that she was freed from her suffering. At once, Jesus realized that power had gone out from him. He turned around in the crowd and asked, Who touched my clothes? You see the people crowding against you, his disciples answered, and yet you can ask, Who touched me? But Jesus kept looking around to see who had done it. Then the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell at his feet and trembling with fear, told him the whole truth. He said to her, Daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace and be freed from your suffering. This is the word of the Lord. My sermon goes like this. Once upon a time, a little girl was born in Palestine. We don't know exactly when, but it is possible that it was the same year the mysterious star appeared above Bethlehem. The Bible does not tell us the girl's name, but there is an old tradition that it might have been Veronica, so we will call her Veronica. She grew up a happy little child. Let's suppose she got married as a teenager, because that is what most people did in those days. We don't know when it started, this medical condition, but it certainly ruined her marriage. There was something wrong with her menstruation. She got her periods unpredictably, they went on for a long time, and she bled a lot. Like, dangerously, a lot. And that left her weak and anemic, and quite unable to bear children. We don't know if her husband was kind or cruel, but this sort of health issue would almost inevitably lead to him divorcing her in those days. You see, here's the big problem. The Jewish religion had strict cleanliness codes. And if you were bleeding the way this woman was, you were considered unclean. And that meant no one could touch you. Uh, if they did, they would become unclean too. And by the same reasoning, you couldn't touch anyone else either. Well, of course, Veronica sought help for this, but this was a long time ago and the medical profession was not very advanced. So various doctors tried various things, but none of them worked. Not only was this disappointing, but their various remedies made her life worse. 
it is said that she suffered much under many doctors for 12 years and that her condition got worse. So by the time we meet Veronica in the Gospels, she is weak, sick, and alone, unmarried and probably poor. Worst of all, she is terribly isolated with no meaningful human contact. And finally, she's just almost hopeless and ready to give up. But something within her said, just try once more. You see, she'd heard of this itinerant prophet named Jesus. And supposedly this Jesus was possessed of amazing powers of healing. And supposedly he was kind. So perhaps he could heal her? She crept through the crowd, hoping and praying that no one would notice her. No one would recognize her as unclean. She caught a glimpse of the man who must surely be Jesus. He seemed to be alone. Wait, no, someone had been kneeling at his feet and was now getting up. It was one of the leaders of the synagogue, an important man in the town. Jesus was turning to go with him. Something in her said, no. Engaged with such an important man, surely Jesus would never pay any attention to her. And all the anger and frustration garnered over the years welled up in her. The crazy notion came to her that she would grab Jesus and demand his attention. But then the shame welled up too. She was unclean. She couldn't touch him and he couldn't touch her or he'd be defiled. She was unclean. She hated that word. And she noticed that he was wearing a religious garment with, what do you call them, fringe or tassels. You know, those strings that hang down from a piece of cloth. Close now, she stretched out her hand through the crowd and her fingers just brushed one of those tassels. There was a sudden jolt of energy throughout her body. All her aching joints stopped aching. Her weariness and worry vanished in a flash. She didn't know how she knew, but she knew that the bleeding had stopped and that her body had been healed. She started to smile with relief and triumph when suddenly Jesus stopped and exclaimed, Who touched my clothes? Her smile ceased, and as her heart thudded down into her stomach, she willed herself to vanish and then just tried to look like everyone else in the crowd. But Jesus started looking each individual in the eye. She knew that he would know. Giving up, she fell at his feet and babbled out her story. She squeezed her eyes as the tears flowed, waiting for punishment, for that familiar sense of disappointment to reassert itself. Neither came. Instead, Jesus took her hands and pulled her to her feet. He smiled at her and said, Daughter. He called her daughter. Your faith has healed you. Go in peace and be freed from your suffering. In the years to come, she would reflect on the exquisite moment many times and eventually tell the story to her children and grandchildren. She would always say this, it wasn't enough for him that I was physically healed. He wanted me to know that I was loved. He didn't want me to go through life believing that I had stolen something. Jesus wanted me to know that he gave freely. You see, he wanted to bless me and he wouldn't let the moment pass without doing it. And that makes all the difference. Jesus loves us. Jesus wants to bless us. Jesus welcomes us. Jesus supports us when we feel down or hopeless. Jesus brings healing. Jesus is the love of the Father made flesh for us. 
and he left us the spirit to continue to care for us and energize us no matter what trials we face. Praise be to God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. That's my sermon for today. I wish all of you the best. And if you'd like to know what happened to Jairus and his daughter, you'll have to open a Bible or a Bible app to Mark chapter 5 and read for yourself. Good day.